My friends, I'm Coach B, Chris Biffle. Welcome to the August 28th broadcast. The show is called Teaching Challenging Kids 101, and the topic tonight, such a popular topic, the writing game. This, my friends, is our full-fledged writing system, part one tonight, part two next week. Man, it's got everything going on in it. From the littlest teeny skills, like how to use the word and, all the way up the cognitive ladder to how to write a five-paragraph college essay. The whole kashmir, as we say in philosophy. Actually, we never say Kashmir. We say Kashmir. That's how we say it. All right, here's the screen. Let's go quickly through our opening. We're one of the world's most popular education websites, and there is Buzz B. Buzzer. One of the world's most popular education websites. Buzz B., I just said that. I know, Coach, but I like the way it sounds. Boy, are we popular. Thank you, Buzz B. Buzzer. Buzz B. What else do you have to say? If you can't view a web class live, poor you. But you can view any webcast 24-7 in the video library on the homepage of wholebrainteaching.com. Thank you, Buzz B. And... Biffy Bluebird and Bobby Bluebird chime in to tell us that you can get a copy of these slides and professional development credit. This is program 536, details at the end. I'm charging along here, my friends, because I really want to get to the writing game. Let's talk a little bit about certification. Here we are here. Here are the levels of certification. You can start at novice, my friends, and climb up into the educational stratosphere to become a whole brain teaching, board certified, international presenter. What's it cost you? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. How do you do it? It's online, my friends. It's all online. Let's check out how you do it. See right here? I'm going to scroll this down. Here is the PDF. Just go through the PDF like this. Read about how to climb up the ladder into the educational stratosphere. Basically, you're going to be writing about things that you learn and posting them on the forum. And you're being very, very nice to Nancy Stoltenberg, who's online tonight. She's the director of WBT certification. She's the one who passes final judgment upon you. So far, she's been pretty nice. And you're right, Daisy D. Nancy is the bomb. Now, let's just look for a second, because some people get a little bit confused. Let's just look for a second at how we have the video library here. Check it out. It looks like there's only about four shows. Au contraire, mon frere. Look, underneath here, there's a slider. Ho, 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 ho. Check out all the shows. 36 of them. And here's the beauty. Many of you love our conferences, but the webcasts, 50 minutes just on Teach OK, 50 minutes just on Switch, we have time in the webcast to go deep into these techniques. So we invite you, we invite you to take a look at them. Now, if you're going to post on tonight's webcast, Look here, my friends. I've already put a place here where you can enter your 
your comments. We're looking for well-organized essays. I mean, we are teachers. Three to seven sentences in length, double space between the paragraphs, start with an engaging quotation, finish up with information about how you can tweak our techniques to develop critical thinking skills. Developing critical thinking skills is not the focus for this year. It's the focus for this millennium. That's all we're pointing at is developing critical thinking skills. And you know what, my friends? We have a special. I, I got to go online here. I got to I gotta really just look at you. Today, after lots of cogitation, I finally saw a way to turn critical thinking into a game. It's coming in a week or two. If you go to our Facebook site, Whole Brain Teaching Facebook, you may get an advanced preview. But as I said on the pre-show, it's got a good name, if nothing else. The name is good. The Cosmic Genius Ladder. What is a cosmic genius? I will tell you. A cosmic genius is a genius of all geniuses. That is our modest goal for our students. Tell me, my friends, if you're on board at least with the excellence of that title and the goal to make our kids geniuses of all geniuses. Ho, 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 yeah. I thought you would be. Now, let us get to this wonderful writing. You know, it may not be a wonderful program. I think it is. But it's a great topic to talk about. Because writing is the name of the game. 40 years. Let me, let me just talk to you while you look at the slide. 40 years in the college trenches, my friends, and I was never not surprised at how poorly my college students wrote. It shocked me. Paper after paper after paper. I thought I'd spelled it out so clear. So this is a system based upon shock and awe at college students' writing. We want to fix everything. And you know what, my friends, while I'm just going on here, I want you just to mark next week on the calendar, because not only next week will we talk about the writing game part two, we may, I hope you're sitting down, we may reveal the secret proofreading method. What's so hot about it? It relieves you of doing the proofreading. Ho, ho, ho. You know what? I'd rather eat a bowl of gravel than proofread another paper. So mark that on your calendar for next week. I'm so excited. i got to take another shot of California Clear right here. Does it work in fourth grade? It works in kindergarten, my friend. Come on. Here you are, California Clear. Now, Jess, good to have you online. Here we go. Here's our friend, one of our favorite friends, JJJ Jive. What's the writing game, coach? JJ Jive, I notice you got worry written all over your face. Not all over my face, coach, but on my forehead. It takes a worried man, coach, to sing a worried song. JJ Jive, I'm with you. Let me help you out. Thanks so much, coach. First thing you need to know about the writing game is that it's a free ebook. So everything I'm saying tonight is spelled out for you. Everything that looks like it'd be a dandy handout is a dandy handout. Just download the whole brain writing game. And while you're at it, my online friends, you could say a few nice things about the excellence of the graphic design of the whole brain writing game cover. 
I mean, think about trying to make up a cover called the Whole Brain Writing Game. Do you like the colors at least? Thank you, Blizzard. Thank you, Nancy. That's enough. I got myself under control. Here we go. The Writing Game. Two components. Complexers and puzzles. Complexers give students hundreds of reps at basic skills employed in puzzles, short and extended essays. Let's just talk about complexers and puzzles. Complexers are bits of language that make sentences more complex. And that's what we want. We want the complex sentence. Now, and is a complexer. I like bananas, simple sentence. I like bananas and peanut butter. That's a little complexer. Or is a complexer. I like bananas or a hot fudge sunda. There's a choice there with or. Kids don't use or much, but it's pretty important. But is a great complexer. I like bananas, but I like hot fudge sundas much better. You with me? And, or, but, because. How about though? Yes. You ever had a kid who used the common powerful word though? Though I like bananas, I should be eating more vegetables. Though is a real nice qualifier, and kids don't use it. So complexers are these little bits of language that make writing more complex. We teach them the little bits of language, and then we start giving them in the puzzles section patterns to use the complex language within. So that's it, just two big chunks. Here's Nervous Nita. Why is, why is teaching writing so stinking hard? Nervous Nita, I'm with you. It is stinking hard. You're right, coach. It's, it's, it's really hard. Why is it so stinking hard, coach? Nita, I've thought about this a lot. Here's my answer. Here's my answer. And it's behind the whole philosophy of the writing game. Writing involves micro skills. Think about tennis, a lot easier than writing. There's the micro skill of tossing the ball. There's the micro skill of swinging the racket back. There's the micro skill of the backhand preparation. There's the micro skill of the forehand preparation. There's the micro skill of coming to the net. There's a micro skill of running to your right, of running to your left. Lots of micro skills. And a good tennis coach doesn't teach you all the skills at the same time, like we do in writing. We say, boys and girls, I want you to write a paragraph. And remember, use your capitalization. Don't forget your end marks. I want some descriptive sentences and especially like to see some adjectives. Develop those topic sentences and add some details. Go. Let's look at all the micro skills. We're trying to teach too many things at the same time. Spelling, capitalization, spacing, commas, end marks, sentence construction, topic sentences, paragraph organization, parts of speech, similes and metaphors, active verbs, apostrophes, essay structure, detailed sentences, evidence, conclusion, narrative verse, argumentative essays, facts verse, opinions, using quotations, and then do not forget the exceptions to the rule. My friends, you see why writing so hard? We got 20 to 30 core skills, and we're trying to teach them all at the same time. So our thought here is, let's teach one micro skill at a time. To my online audience, are you with me in the idea 
So at least just teach one thing at a time and give you lots and lots of repetitions. And we can teach one thing. We can teach one thing in kindergarten. And we can teach some other small skill in upper grades. But the beauty of the writing game is that we designed it to work at all levels. So J.J. Jai says, so what's your solution? Here's the solution. Teach one micro skill at a time. Yes! I'm convinced that is the right approach. But Nervous Nita comes in. Sounds so crazy, it just might work. I'm with you, Nervous. Nervous, you mind if I call you Nervous? No, Coach, it's all right. Everybody calls me Nervous. I don't know why. But it's unusual, and I like unusual. All right. Here are the complexers we're going to talk about. Most of these tonight. And, but, or, since, because, though, adjectives and nouns, simile, fact, paraphrase, active verbs, descriptive sentences, comma list, intro phrase, parenthetical phrase, and complex sentences. Those are some of the things that make writing complex. And I, I still don't get it. How does it work? Let me show you, JJ Jive. Here's a page. Now, my friends, the beauty of these webcasts, as webcast veterans will tell you, is that we, through our magic, can blow up the screen to an amazing size. Just give me a second here as I come in to the core material. Now, here's the basic pattern. We give them a sentence frame. I play baseball and football. And is the complexer we're working on here. You see, it's right up here at the top. And we point out that we have to have a noun connected to a noun. Now, kids always say, what should I write about? Let's solve that problem right now, my friends. There's some nouns that you can write about. Is everybody digging that right now? Solves the problem of what I write about. There's 40 nouns. Boy, girl, dog, cat, horse, house. You put them in there. So the kids are supplied with the seed words, and here's how it works. You could do it whatever way you want. It's your classroom. But what I think would be a good idea is that the kids verbally take turns filling in those blanks with, with the word and. I like dogs and cats. My house is big and friendly. So they take turns just using the word and, picking the nouns. You can either have them go in order or skip around. Many times they can just use the word and, use the word and, use the word and. One minute, let's see how many reps we can get. Now let's go back to the screen. A little bit more sophisticated. Let's Use the word and and follow it up with a detailed sentence. I play baseball and football. I like both games because they're team sports. So now they're writing real short two-sentence paragraphs using the word and. Notice what I've done. I put a big blue box around the period. Why? Because kids forget end marks. I've broken up the sentence with the and box. That is the core idea. Now, we'll talk about the points later on, but it's just nice to have points associated with these things so kids can keep a running score. 
Let's check out another screen here, my friends. Here's Biffy Bluebird. And if you want a copy of this, we'll tell you how to get it at the end. Biffy says, students take turns working in pairs to verbally fill in blanks as many times as possible. Or they simply write out their answers for a given period of time. Either way, change it up. Any questions thus? Yes, orally first, Carla. Why? Because when they do it orally, we're working here on fluency. We're not working on content yet. Content will come. But we just want them to be able to think a sentence, think a sentence, think a sentence, think a pair of sentences, think a pair of sentences, think a pair of sentences. Let's build the ability to use language freely. Let's look at another screen. Here it is. We use the word adder because we think it's clearer than detail sentence. You know, the word detail sentence, I'm going to show you where we have the word adder here. The word, the phrase detail sentence, you see it? It's right here. The phrase detail sentence, it's not terribly even accurately descriptive. What's that mean, detail sentence? Sounds like a teeny little thing. We prefer adder. But I'm going to shock you now, my friends. I am going to shock you to your bones. Is my online audience ready to be shocked? You know what happens when I'm shocking. I take off the glasses. Yes, it's that kind of moment. We say that we like the phrase adder, adder sentence, and we prefer it to a detailed sentence. But here's the shocking thing. We might be wrong. Are you shocked by that? Detailed sentence is part of academic language. As It's not academic language. So if we're rethinking this, we might say, give me a detail sentence, or we might say, give me a detail adder, combining the clearer term with the academic vocabulary. You can go to your colleagues tomorrow and say, you know, it was so shocking last night, Coach B said he might be wrong. It must be the weather. Something's Something's out of kilter here. All right, let's press on. Here is, now the other thing in the writing game. In the writing game, we also provide you short, detailed descriptions of what to expect as a teacher. So here I just say, and is a complexion that students employ most commonly. A good general rule to avoid overuse is that and cannot be used more than once in a paragraph. Online audience, tell me what you think. Is and overused? If it is, make it a rule that you just use it once per paragraph. All right. Here is Nervous Nita. Show me more complexers. Nervous Nita, I'm going to. Here's another one. Folks, the beauty of the complexers is they follow the same pattern. Give a sentence frame, and notice here the comma is in the big blue box along with the end mark to show we've got to have a comma in there before the but. Now, technically speaking, we have a comma before the but if after the but we have an independent clause. So teach kids that you got to have, quote unquote, a sentence on each side of the word but 
or as we like to say, a complete message. And we're going to use the same all-purpose collection of nouns. Here's or. Same pattern. Use or over and over and over again. What we really are shooting for here, my friends, is for kids to get down here to the slightly more advanced construction of writing two-sentence paragraphs. Notice we're keeping it simple. Why? Because writing is so stinking hard. Lots of repetitions. Let's give our kids a sense of success. Hey, I can do this. It's so easy. I can do it verbally with my friend Maria. Here's another one. Since. Since you like bananas, comma, try this banana pudding. Same pattern. Because. I like the boy because he's nice. Now let's stop the show. Stop the show. We have advanced beyond this level of thinking with because. We have a lot more to say about because. I'll just put in two of our most recent ideas. Whenever kids use the word because, we want to see a because clapper. If they're using strong evidence, if we want them to use weak evidence on purpose, they use the pity pad clapper. I like bananas because I like them. That's weak evidence. I like bananas because they're sweet and nutritious. That's strong evidence. So we'll talk much more about the use of the word because when we get to the critical thinking game called, what's it called? Cosmic Genius Ladder. Coming up in about two weeks. I don't know if you can wait that long. It's like Christmas. Let's take a look at though. Though is a word kids almost never use, and it's a powerful qualifier. The boy ran fast, though he was losing the race. If you can get kids to use the word though, they've moved up one teeny rung on the writing ladder. Adjectives and nouns. All right, look. Stop the show again. Take off the glasses. One of the easiest ways to increase the quality of student writing is to require one adjective for every noun. At least one adjective per sentence. But how do we teach that? We don't want them thinking about anything else except adjective noun. Let's have lots of verbal repetitions of adjective noun combinations. Check it out. Adjective big, noun, girl. Adjective red, noun, horse. Give me adjective noun, adjective noun, adjective noun. But I don't know what to write about, says our friend, the student. Well, my friend, here's a bunch of nouns with some adjectives supplied. Again, solves the problem of kids who say, I don't know what to write about. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to make this point. I'm not sure I've ever seen it before, but that just may speak to my limited experience. When you use two adjectives, be sure they're different. We're not going to say the big, comma, large horse. We're going to say the red, hungry horse. Or the kind, nervous mouse. Double adjectives are a beautiful thing. In fact, if I was running the show, I might say I want at least one double adjective per paragraph. Just be sure that each one is different. An adjective modifies a noun, so if you say the big, large horse, you're modifying that noun one time with two words. 
the big starving horse. Oh, the horse is big, and you know what else? It's starving. It's the big starving horse. Give kids lots of reps in using double adjectives. Here's our next point. Simile. My friends, why don't I teach metaphor? Because simile is easier to teach, and it does pretty much the same job. Is that shocking to you? Whenever you have the word as, you're heading in the direction of a simile. I like apples. This apple is sweet as candy. The best holiday is Christmas. Christmas is as fun as a roller coaster. So what we need for simile is we need set up the topic, then make a simile about it. Let's look at that. Here's the topic. I like apples. Then make a simile. So what I did down here was instead of nouns, we have a new list of things to write about. The new list, a bunch of topics. So put in the topic, make a statement about it, then develop a simile over and over and over again. Online questions, let them flow. Notice, notice the simplicity of complexors. Same pattern over and over again, sentence frame, easy to fill in, more advanced sentence frame, add a little bit more. So as soon as your kids get the idea, boom, give them the copy or you got a computer projector, you are a lucky person, project it on the screen and let's go, many as we can in two minutes. Count up your points, break your previous best record. Here's our next one, fact. How do we teach a fact? A fact can follow the pattern of blank is blank, John is good, the weather is hot. So give them practice in writing facts and then writing an adder detail sentence. Now nervous need to ask the question, how do the points work? Well, the answer is they work any way you want them to work. Here's what Biffy Bluebird says. Students only fill in blanks as many times as possible for a minute. Keeping track of their points on a record sheet, they're always trying to beat their previous best score. You with me? So you want to turn it more into a game. Then one kid fills in the blank as many times as possible. The other kid makes tally marks. They keep a record, and they see if they can beat their previous best record. Or two kids work together for a game of doubles. So you can make it more or less game-like. When students work against a time limit, they build fluency. To reward for excellent content, use the Super Improvers Wall. Let's stop right there, my friends. Two things we want. We want fluency, speed, 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 and we want excellent content. Speed is easily, easy to measure. How many of these can you do in a minute? Just crank them out, crank them out, crank them out. It's as if I'm telling you, Hit the forehand, hit the forehand, hit the forehand, hit the forehand. Now stop. Let's focus on correct form as we hit the forehand. Let's talk about content. So as you're walking around the room, you're listening to what kids are saying. Or you're reading what they're writing. When you see excellent content, when you see an improvement in the content, then you go to the Super Improvers Wall. Those of you who are new to the Super Improvers Wall, I'll show you the webcast. It is probably the star program of the last year. But each student gets a star. When they get 10 stars, they move up a color level. And you're right, Daisy D. 
The Super Improvers Wall is changing a lot of lives. Deb Weigel, good to have you online. So let's just let's just sum up what we've got here. Friends, we have the writing game that has two components, complexers and puzzles. Complexers give hundreds of repetitions on little micro skills of using adjectives, but, and, or, though, since, because, and building little two-sentence paragraphs. Lots of repetitions. To judge for excellence of content, you have to do what you have to do as a teacher anyway. You have to be aware of what the kid's writing level is and then make judgments about when they're headed in the right direction. When you see them headed in the right direction of greater speed, more detailed sentences, connection between the adder detail and the sentence before, using patterns they've never used before like though and since, when you see them moving in that direction, you give them a star on the super improvers wall. Now paraphrasing is an important writing skill. How do you teach it? You take a sentence at recess, I usually talk to my friends, and you flip-flop it, I usually talk to my friends at recess. I take my dog for a walk every day, every day I take my dog for a walk. Now this is a more complex skill. You've got to set up a sentence that you can flip-flop. But the ability to say the same thing in two different ways is a mark of writing skill. Why is it a mark of writing skill? I'll tell you. You have your thesis sentence, and in the conclusion, you restate your thesis sentence in different words. You have your thesis sentence, point number one, point number two, point number three. I'm going full screen on you now, my friends. Listen, you ask me why paraphrasing is important. I'll tell you as a college teacher why it's important. Because where we're taking the writing game is to the five-paragraph college essay. Thesis sentence, point one, point two, point three. Now I'm going to talk about point one. Not in the same language I used up here. I'm going to paraphrase point one and expand it. Paraphrase point two and expand it. Paraphrasing is very crucial to development of writing skills. I'm sure you knew that. All right. Let's take a look at a couple more of these complexers. Ho, 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 oh, oh my goodness. Oh, we got to stop. We got to stop the show. Got to stop the show. Stop the show. Glasses come off. How do you teach active verbs? That's a good question. You've got to admit that's a good one. How do you teach kids the difference between passive and active verbs? I'm going to tell you. I'm telling you right now. Glasses back on. Here's the screen. You tell kids there are some baby talk verbs, and this is it. Am, are, be, had, has, have, is, was, were. Those are the passive verbs. So you get them to make a sentence with a baby talk verb, I am happy. Then keep the main idea of that sentence and use some other word besides am. I smile and laugh all day long. That tells you I'm happy. Or, my friends, we are good neighbors. Are? That's baby talk. We help our neighbors clean their yards. Look how much better the second sentence is than the first sentence. It's chunky, full of details. We help our neighbors clean their yards. That's what you mean 
by good neighbors. So, teach them baby talk, write a baby talk sentence, and then they don't know what other verbs to use. Why? Let's make it simple. There's a whole bunch of verbs right there. Yes, my friends. I like that piece because I'm a college teacher, at least I was. Descriptive sentences. I run fast. Descriptive sentences. I can run faster than a wild deer. So write a blah sentence, then write a descriptive sentence. How do we write descriptive sentences? Take an activity like swimming in a cold lake or hiking up a steep mountain or watching a scary movie. Make a sentence out of that and then make it descriptive. I went swimming in a lake that was as cold as an ice cube. Oh, that's so descriptive. It's a simile. Give kids lots of reps in writing descriptive sentences. And then here's a little information about descriptive sentences. It's a challenging intellectual activity. Spend some time working as a class on creating blah, lifeless sentences. If you wish, use the phrases at the bottom of the descriptive sentences page. When you believe your class is ready to orally create descriptive sentences, you need to give them extra time, perhaps two or three minutes. So the writing game goes on to describe how to use commas in a list. I like apples, oranges, and pears. I'm sorry, my friends. I'm sorry. It's another glasses off moment. The question is, if you have three items in a list, do you use two commas? I like apples, comma, oranges, comma, and pears, or I like apples, comma, oranges, and pears. Here's the rule, ironclad, I'm sticking by it. You use the second comma, or you don't, and I mean it. See, I'll stick by that. I don't think it makes any difference. Don't tell anyone. Just whatever you do, be consistent. We tell kids a bunch of rules. Let's tell them some rules that are going to help them out, like every sentence needs an adjective. All right, so we talked about the comma list. Here's how to write an intro comma phrase with an opener and then the original sentence. Here's how to write a comma splitter. Now the academic language is often a prepositional phrase or an adverbial phrase. I just call it a splitter. You could call it a prepositional phrase splitter if you want to use the descriptive language and the academic language, which thinking about, I think that's probably a good idea. The adverbial phrase splitter. What do we mean by a splitter? Um, the name says it all. It splits up a sentence. That's why we call it a splitter. Couple more. Double comma phrase. Whoa! Look how far our kids have advanced. Under the hot sun, Saskia, with her friends, played on the beach. Under the hot sun, Saskia, Deidre, and Lily played on the beach. Under Saskia, Deidre, and Lily, under the hot sun, played on the beach. You write your choice. Now kids are writing complexly constructed sentences modified with adverbial, prepositional, and parenthetical expressions. And there's some information included in the writing game about how to get kids up to that level. And you know what? If you can't remember it, my friends, Go to the writing game. It's a free download. A few more points. Huge point coming. 
bigger than huge, actually. Here it is. Students need lots of reps with micro writing skills. That's the big point. Give them lots and lots and lots of reps. Is there an app for this game? There's a free download for this game called The Writing Game under free ebooks at wholebrainteaching.com. Another huge point. Use the scoreboard. When your kids are working and writing, reward them with smileys and urge them on with frownies. So you're using the scoreboard. And keep them focused on two things. Follow directions quickly, which should soon become follow directions immediately and improving. That's all you want your kids to do. Listen to me. After they learn follow directions quickly, I got this from Farrah Shipley, Lubbock Lightning, our outstanding Texas teacher. She teaches her kids the rule is not follow directions quickly. That's not fast enough. Follow directions immediately. If we were rewriting and take a lot of rewriting, we would go to follow directions immediately. And you want your kids to improve. How do you help them improve? Bingo bongo, the super improver team. Yes, Nancy, don't you like follow directions immediately? So here's Ms. Linenthal. You all know Ms. Linenthal. She has that wonderful, melodious tone of voice. Gosh, the writing game part one sounds great, coach. But how could I get a professional development credit for this broadcast and a copy of these slides? Ms. Linenthal, how you feel? Oh, so much better, coach. I had a cold last week, but I'm feeling dandy now. Well, Ms. Linenthal, let me tell you what you can do to get a copy of these slides. Go to PayPal. This is program 536, and I'm getting much better at responding quickly. Let's go here to PayPal. Let's scroll up. Here we are. Right here. Right here. You see? Put $5.36 in there, then I'll know when I get $5.36 after the PayPal deduction. Yes, my friends, I'll send you a program 536 with all these slides. You will get a professional development certificate that has not just one, but two, slots, two sides. And let's talk about next week. The writing game part two from brainstorming to essays. And we show you next week how to use the complexers in paragraph and multi-paragraph writing tasks. And let me tell you this. We may even throw in, I hope you're sitting down, subject-verb agreement and the secret proofreading method. Yes, my friends. The secret proofreading method. And my friends, I would like to tell you this from my heart to yours. I appreciate your prayers. We've been having glimmers of light in my family. We had a beautiful, blessed day today, my friends. I thank you so much for your prayers. Please keep them coming, but know your prayers are working for my family. And this has been the darkest time of our lives, but your prayers are working. Thank you so much, my friends. Please keep them coming. All right. Here's our last little message. If you want a conference, please, my friends, get an administrator in a headlock and send me an email. 
but let's have a conference in your area. If you could put together a big crowd, 200 teachers, how come for travel expenses? If not, we'll work out something. So any questions before we head off into the electronic stratosphere? Can we buy the mugs, bags, and t-shirts? They're coming. We're a little slow. We had to take some time, my friends, to create the critical thinking game called... Is it 536 or 537? I believe, my friends, let's check it out, that the program number... Let me see what our most current program is. Oh, my goodness. Let's do make it 536, because last week, 536 was just an open mic. I'll renumber that. 536 we're going to stick with for tonight's broadcast. Super Improvers Wall, that's a good question. What broadcast is it? It's way back here. Let's go to the full screen so you can see how I'm scrolling through here. I also recommend... Mind soccer. Um, Super Improvers is 503. You know, my friends, I think I'm going to put together a package of the links to all 36 broadcasts. Now, that would be I think $180 worth of material. I think I could cut it down to $179.95. I'll cut it way down, folks. Um, we do need the opportunity to have all of the links. So we'll figure out something there. My friends, thank you so much. Delighted to see everyone online work for certification. One last point here. We measure our success in many ways by the smiles on teachers' faces, by the response that we get on the forum, by your lively, beautiful, energetic comments in these webcasts. We do measure our success that way. But another way we measure our success is by the peak YouTube views. So we look at what's the most YouTube views we get during the year. It's usually third week of August. Now in the first year, we had like a thousand or two on that third week of August. Then we went to 2,000. Then we went to 3,000. Last year we had 4,000 views on August 23rd. This year, we had 6,000 views on August 23rd. My math is not that great, but I'm talking an increase of maybe 50%. That's how fast and big we're growing. Thanks to you, my friends. Keep spreading the words. This is Coach B signing off. Power to the teachers. God bless us all. See you next week.